Her name is Kara Zorel from Krypton. Your cousin just torched $50,000 worth of custom hardware. Send me the bill. On a reporter's salary. Right. Ever since I read that James Gunn was going to be directing the next Superman movie, the first thought that crossed my mind was, will James Gunn be able to pull off a good Superman film? Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Up until this point, I have refrained from talking about movies and TV shows from the MCU and the DCEU because I'm not a fan of either. Don't get me wrong, I'm a huge fan of the DC animated universe and have been ever since I was a kid. I just don't like what I see on the big screen as of late. It is so bad, I want to give you a zero. If you haven't already, you know what to do by now. Show some love and do subscribe, it really helps out the channel. I like to refresh my page and see the sub count go up every time. Yes, I am that sad. So make me happy. Thank you. Now on to my unsolicited thoughts on... Uh, Superman Legacy. This is being written by me. The filmmaker is officially making Superman Legacy his next directorial vehicle. <laughs> now I have watched me some Superman films and let me tell you, I have yet to come across one that can be called a good Superman film. Superman is a very unique character, being insanely strong, he cannot be beat by normal thugs on the street. For an alien like Superman, an alien level threat is needed for the stakes to matter. The thing about this is, it translates better in animated movies or TV series, but not on the big live action screen. It is easier to understand the over the top world domination premise when it's in cartoon form, but not so much in a live action. Since the threat is world ending, I know that they aren't going to let the world get destroyed. It's a big budget film, we can't have a dark ending unless there's a part 2 coming out. So my brain automatically knows not to care for the threat because the implausibility has already registered. I know it's not real. Additionally, villains get their own share of panels slash screen times in comics and shows so that the reader and audience get to spend time with them, their backstories and motivations. Doing that in a 120 minute movie becomes a struggle, especially if you haven't established the villain in prior movies. Sometimes movies expand the scale of the plot to such an extent that they forget to ground their characters to their core and they end up losing the audience. What is this core? Well, simply put, it is, why am I supposed to give a fuck about this? That's it. Tying this to the Superman movies of the modern era, I don't get the sense of what struggle these movies are about and why I have to give a damn about this all-powerful alien. You're not Superman, you know. <laughs> Who is Superman? What is Superman about? Why does he save people? Why does he care? All we know is that he is Superman and he's good and powerful. On the surface, that might seem like a good explanation, but it doesn't translate well on screen. For hardcore Superman fans, it might be enough, but not for the regular folks who don't read comics or watch the animated shows, who don't know of Superman outside of pop culture references. The hardcore fans know who Superman is and his motivations, which makes it easier for them to fill in those large gaping holes. Ironically enough, Superman Returns did try to ground Superman to Earth. They had one pivotal focus, Superman's love interest, Lois. Even though the plot of the movie was certifiably moronic, it grounded Superman's focus and interest, which were on Earth. And to top it off, the villain was a human being and not some alien that just showed up to conquer the world. Well, Lex Luthor did try to make an island out of the kryptonite rock and thought that it would be a new real estate gold mine. My disappointment is immeasurable. But that is besides the point. He still is a measly human being. I enjoyed parts of the movie that tried to ground an unearthly being to human emotions we could feel for and cheer on. I low-key wished that they had kept Brandon Routh as Superman under the new DCEU. This is the second time I've gone nuts and fought myself. But I'm not complaining. It gave us Henry Cavill. Excuse me. And then proceeded to rip our hearts. Thank you very much for that, Mr. Gunn. And although he was by far the best actor to represent Superman on the silver screen in terms of aesthetics and persona, but it's hardly the best portrayal of Superman. This was not Henry's fault. I think he looked the part and did his job. Zack Snyder just had a very different vision for Superman in his universe. He focused on superheroes being gods and although I did like how that was shown, it did a disservice to Superman as a character. In Zack's version, you couldn't ground him. He just felt like a deity who did us earthlings a favor by not killing us. Snyder's universe made Batman's irrational fears kinda rational. Superman was so far out of the realm of relatability that I just do not care what happened to his character. He'll be alright. Well, mostly. You need the audience to care about the characters beyond their notoriety. You need to ground them. Why doesn't Superman want to go and look for his Kryptonian survivors? 
Why does he want to stay back and protect Earth? Why doesn't he crave power? Why doesn't he just turn evil? Who's to stop him? And it's not Batman. Do you bleed? Let's not fool ourselves here. Oh, something is definitely bleeding. Why does he have his moral compass and where does he get it from? He isn't human. He's an alien. What makes him act like a notable human? The Captain America films? Get back! The answer to these questions is what is missing in Superman films and why the live action versions of Superman aren't that great. We don't know Superman and why he is the way he is. So tying this all back to Superman legacy, has James Gunn really understood Superman enough to make a successful film? I hope so. He's done quite good with obscure characters. I had never heard of the Guardians of the Galaxy and I didn't think I would even remotely like that film. But he did the unthinkable. He made us care about a tree that did not say more than three words. I am he made us care about a f***ing weasel and a shark played by Sylvester Stallone. And... He also gave me one of the funniest series I have watched in a while. Eat peace, mother Peacemaker. He made us empathize with an unredeemable villain. So he does have the ability to make us care for unknown characters. Will that translate to Superman? Will he be able to get us to care about this character that two directors before him could not? It is too early to tell but I am willing to give him the benefit of the doubt. He has earned it. I think he has a good track record so far and I think he knows what he's up against. The expectations with Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 1 and the Suicide Squad were quite low since nobody knew the former and nobody expected the latter to do any good but Superman? Now he is neither obscure nor unknown so it might be a difficult task. Overall, I just hope he grounds Superman to his core character and beliefs. Try to flesh out his motivations to be Superman because that will really help the audience to understand the character and maybe even give a shit about him rather than just chalk him up to be an all-powerful god and just a good guy that wants to do good and be good, which would be boring as hell. Add a little bit of spice. If you have stuck with me all the way through, I thank you for your time. It's been fun talking at you for 5 minutes. These are like my therapy sessions, you know. I have opinions and I want you to know them. Hence, the unsolicited thoughts. If you liked my video, consider leaving a like, share it with others, you never know, they might like it too. And subscribe if you would like to see more of me pop up on your feed. And as always, I will see you all in the next one. Bye bye Please, James Gunn, sit on me. Oh. Ooh.